hello friends welcome back so in this session we will learn how to create the servlet how to configure the servlet and what is the life cycle of a servlet <coughs> so let's get started so how we can create the servlets we have three ways to create the servlet means we have a three different different approaches that we can use to create the servlet one is one is by implementing java dot sorry java x dot servlet servlet dot servlet interface so we can implement this interface and we can create the servlet class another one we can we can extend an abstract class that is available under java x dot servlet package and the third one is we can we can extend or we can inherit Oh, sorry we can extend the http servlet class that is available under java x dot servlet dot http servlet http servlet uh, and that is available under java x dot servlet dot http package okay so in this three ways we can create our servlet so let's see that example we have created three servlets servlet a servlet b and servlet c here we have created three servlets servlet a servlet b and servlet c and what they what that servlet is doing that servlet is showing corresponding html class a dot html b dot html and c dot html if i open servlet a if i open servlet a then you can see the code here we can see under the service class we we are returning only the a dot html file only a dot html file under b what i am doing i am returning b dot html and under c under c i am returning h t c dot html file simple and html a html b and html c corresponding has the same name servlet a a html file b servlet b b html file servlet c and c html file very simple very simple servlet a is returning a dot html servlet b is returning b dot html servlet c is returning c dot html okay so these three approaches they have given so why these three approaches so here if you see if you see we can create the servlet by implementing java x dot servlet dot servlet interface and we need to override the following methods 1 2 3 4 5 these five methods we have to override if we are using servlet interface to create our servlet class so servlet a we are creating using servlet class only so if we are implementing servlet a then we are overriding one init method one get servlet config method one service method one destroy method and one get servlet info get servlet info these uh, these five methods one two three four five methods we have to override because in this uh, in this servlet in this uh, servlet interface that five methods are declared and what are those methods servlet init method is doing the initialization of a servlet class means initialization of resources like we want to make some data connection we can do that one we want to read some files we can do that one so for that purpose init method is used to initialization the to initializing the servlet class and get config get servlet config is used to get the servlet config object in the next session we will see what is servlet config okay and service method is 
used to do the service for all the types or we can say service method is used to handle the client request this will do the client uh, this will handle the client request and will do the uh, will do the business uh, actions whatever we need to write our logic our business logic our requirement whatever we have to do that we need to write into this service method and destroy method will release the resource that resource we have initialized using init method like if we made some connection then that connection we have to release using destroy method okay and get servlet info that is returning the information of a servlet like what is the use of the servlet you can return because it, this return type is a string only so you can return any string like whatever you want sir what is the servlet name what is the use of servlet blah blah so this type of description and you can return so that is nothing but the get servlet info only so these five methods these five method init method gets uh, servlet config method service method destroy method and get servlet info method these five methods we need to implement if we are using servlet interface init method is used to initialize the servlet get servlet config is used to get the servlet config object we will see this what is the servlet config object in our next session and service uh, and service method is used to do the business action and destroy method is used to release or to destroy the resource that we have initialized using init method and info uh, servlet info method get servlet info method is used to get the information about servlet like what is the name of servlet what is the purpose of servlet anything you can we can describe and we can return <coughs> okay so this is all about the servlet method uh, servlet uh, sorry servlet uh, interface and that, that method and we can create the servlet by implementing servlet class also okay servlet interface also okay and the next one is we can create our servlet by extending generic servlet class by creating uh, sorry by uh, extending generic servlet abstract class this is an abstract class this is an abstract class if you see java x dot servlet dot generic servlet this is an abstract class this is an abstract class and using this abstract class so this one is this one is an abstract class so using this generic servlet also we can create our servlet and what is the advantage we are getting if we are creating our servlet using generic servlet we can also create our servlet use by extending java x dot servlet dot generic servlet abstract class if we create servlet using abstract class then we need to implement only one service method we no need to override we no need to override any other method except the service we no need to do so why because this all uh, in it get servlet config destroy and get servlet info these all these all methods are implemented into generic servlet because because servlet uh, generic servlet is not an interface generic servlet is an abstract class and this generic servlet is the subclass of or we can say generic servlet is the subtype of servlet only so under this serv generic servlet servlet is extended it is implemented it means that uh, inside generic generic servlet for uh, in, inside generic servlet implementation for init get servlet config destroy and get servlet info is given the implementation for in uh, init method is given into generic servlet because generic servlet is the subtype of a servlet only okay so but for uh, the implementation for service method is not provided why because this is a business logic we have to do only so that's why we have to we have to override this one only okay but since that is overrided in it get servlet config destroyed if we are not 
we don't want to use their configuration so and they sorry their uh, not their configuration their implementation if we are not happy with that implementation we can we can override that also other method we can uh, we can override as per our requirement if we want to do initialization of the servlet or destruction of the servlet or information about the servlet or anything we want to do or we want to get the servlet con con uh, servlet context or anything we can override that methods okay so what we are doing here in our servlet b we are creating our servlet by extending generic servlet and this generic servlet is nothing but uh, we cannot see here yeah this is implementing only the java x dot servlet you can see here that is also implementing servlet again so that is the subtype only so here all the method this uh, init method and destroy method is also implemented if we don't implement that doesn't uh, matter it is fine it will not give any compilation error even it will not give any error here because if we are overriding that is our choice if we are not overriding that is our choice because that is overrided already okay but we are overriding because we have to see the flow this flow means we have to see the life cycle that's why i am overriding here okay fine fine and last one is HTTP servlet. HTTP servlet is again the subtype of subtype of generic servlet. And HTTP servlet is used for HTTP request only. And uh, we will see that also how many types of method are there in HTTP. In HTTP method, how many types of method get post, delete, put. These four methods are there and what are the use of those method so that that we will see later but here if you see if we want if we want to override only service method that also we can do no issue or if we want to do do get or do post do delete or do put that also we can do but here the difference is for service method for service method suppose here if i open the service uh, sorry sir let's see Oh, sorry this is B this is C okay so if I open the servlet C here if you see do get is there and if I want to override service method that also I can do that also I can do okay but first choice which one will be this will be the first choice because only service method is only the method that will serve the client request even if you are implementing http request or oh sorry even if you are creating uh, your servlet using http request or even if you are creating your servlet using generic servlet in that case only the service method is there that will serve the client request so since you are using http servlet then also if you are doing do get method or do post method that also will be called by service method only because service method <coughs> because the code is written in such a way into http servlet abstract class that it is checking for the method type if method type is get then it is uh, it is calling do get method by passing the servlet uh, uh, http servlet request and http servlet response if the method is post it is by it is calling do post if it is a method is a delete then it is calling do delete if it is a put then it is calling do put corresponding method it is automatically calling however the method is there okay so that's why we are giving do get because get method we can call from the url directly other method like post delete put that we have to call by passing some specific parameter or by passing the in the data in, inside a body we will see that later okay so this is not required here service method implementation also they have provided if we don't give this this implementation then that is also fine because the implementation for all like for init for destroy for all the implementation is, is given see i am not giving any implementation all the code i have closed inside inside this server let's see I am not given any implementation. See, I am not given any implementation. Once, 
but still it is not giving any compilation error why because in http servlet all the methods are implemented all the methods which methods all these method init method is also implemented into init method and uh, init method get servlet config uh, config destroy and get servlet info that method is already implemented into generic servlet inside http servlet they have also implemented service method so you no need to implement that also but what the implementation is given in that one they have implemented they are just checking for the method type they are checking only for the method type what is the method type if method type is get then they are calling they are calling do get if the method type is post then they are calling do post so only that filter they are doing if the method type is a particular type then they are calling to the particular method that's it they are doing this much only otherwise they will throw exception method not spotted something like that method not found anything okay so that is the implementation they have provided and since if it is an http servlet request you can do that also other method also you can override like uh, like uh, uh, init get servlet config destroy get servlet info you can call this method you can override this method also into our http servlet subtype means inside inside c you can do that one okay so here if you see uh, i will uncomment this code and i will show you so here what we did what we did here we have used do get only we have overrided do get only do get only okay and this do get what it is doing it is returning c dot html file simply and here okay fine why i am why i have overrided this init and destroy because we have to see the we have to see the uh, life cycle of servlet that's why okay and this constructor why i have created uh, why, why I, have, I have given a default constructor because we have to see how many object is created okay fine that's it okay this unsuppressed uh, suppressed warning i am giving because i am not uh, using this servlet config so that's why i am using i am giving this unsuppressed uh, uh, warning only because i am not using this one currently okay fine fine so this is all about the how we can create the servlets we can create the servlet using we can create our servlet using servlet interface or by uh, by using generic servlet or by using http servlet if we want to create using uh, servlet interface then we have to override five methods if we are if we are overriding if we are creating our servlet by extending generic servlet abstract class then we have to override only one method other methods are already implemented and if we are using http servlet then http servlet abstract class then in that case we no need to override any method because all the methods are implemented but you cannot do any any operation you have to override the corresponding method types like do get do post okay that's it so in these three ways we can create the objects and we have seen how we can create the object next one is the configuration what is the meaning of configuration we have to tell our web container that this is our servlet class otherwise how our servlet will know because see currently if you see there is only one package and inside this package our servlets are there and if i create here one more package like here some util in that case in that case and here i have created some class like uh, uh, my util is uh, simply my util that's it so here if you see we have two packages and here also one uh, class is there and here three classes are there so how your servlet container will know which one is your servlet class what is the url for that one how we will know sorry uh, how your container will know which one is the servlet class what is the url for that one what is the name of servlet how your web container will know so we have to do some configuration using that configuration your web container your web container will uh, 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 your servlet uh, your web container will uh, will come to know this is our servlet class this is the url for this one this is the name of the servlet okay 
so that is nothing but servlet configuration so servlet configuration can be done in two ways one is by using xml by using xml file xml file is nothing but web.xml file is there that is a deployment descriptor file another one is by using annotation java annotations and load on startup also we can configure that we will see now okay so so here for this servlet a for this servlet a we we are using we are using we are using xml configuration xml configuration means web.xml so this web.xml is where is this web.xml is available under this web apps under this src main web app under this web app web inf is there under this web inf web.xml file is there so inside this web. Um, web.xml file we have to do the configuration so for servlet a and for servlet b we have done the configuration in web.xml file so where is that configuration so the, here you can see this is the configuration for servlet we have to do in this way servlet we have to use servlet servlet tag using the servlet tag we can do our configuration so here if you see this is the one servlet I, you can give any name you can give any name for the servlet servlet a this is the name of servlet this is the name of servlet servlet a you can give any name whatever you prefer you can give that name and what is the servlet class we have to give here so this is a fully qualified class name this is nothing but a fully qualified class name means fully qualified means this is the package and this is the class name package and class name is called fully qualified class name so we have to give here servlet class this is our servlet class that's it and for servlet b also we have did the configuration so for servlet uh, servlet b i have given name as servlet b anything you can give the name whatever the you will prefer the name <coughs> servlet a and servlet b we have given as a convenient name because her class name is servlet a servlet b you can see servlet a servlet b so that's why i have given the name as a servlet a and servlet b you can give any name if this class name also you can give any name but the class name you have to give whatever the name you are giving here for the class servlet a and that package what is the package com.techhub.demo.servlet com.techhub.demo.servlet under the servlet servlet a class is there and this name you can give anything this name you can give anything servlet uh, b and servlet b is also available under same package the name of class is servlet b that's it so this is the configuration of our servlet what is the name of servlet what what is the configuration given here here we have given only two configuration what what are the two two configuration one is what is the name of servlet we have given here another one what is the class of servlet we have given here what is the url of that servlet we have not given that we have to give here servlet mapping this is a servlet the simple servlet you can see from the from the tag name of you you can understand this is a servlet just simple information about servlet what is the name of servlet what is the class of servlet that's it here servlet mapping particular servlet is mapped to which url which url servlet a is mapped to url a servlet b is mapped to url b simple here what we are giving we are giving the information about the servlet only servlet a and servlet b what is the name of servlet servlet a what are the class of servlet servlet a is a class what is the name of servlet this this servlet servlet b and what is the class of this servlet servlet b and here what is the mapping what servlet a this servlet a is mapped to which url this servlet a is mapped to url a servlet b is mapped to url b that's it so here we have given the configuration three configuration we have given servlet name servlet class and servlet url we can give in this way okay so this is nothing but this is nothing but xml configuration we can say this is an xml configuration by using web.xml file only that's it so this is our web.xml file the correct and another one is annotation that is very easy so using annotations so for servlet a and servlet b we have used xml configuration for servlet c we have used annotation configuration this is very easy 
very easy all the things we can specify here in one line only web servlet annotation we have to use where is this web servlet annotation this annotation is available under java x dot servlet dot annotation <coughs> sorry java x dot servlet dot annotation under this under this package this annotation is available and that annotation name is web servlet web servlet and that servlet web servlet annotation has some variable first one is a name name will tell what is the name of servlet servlet c you can give any name servlet c servlet servlet c that's it name of servlet what is the url of the servlet servlet url c simple so all information we have specified here we no need to specify the class uh, the, uh, the the class name because class name it automatically infer it, it will automatically infer your web container will automatically uh, take the name what is wherever this annotation is marked your container will automatically take the class name you no need to tell the class name here so only this two configuration means here three configuration okay, automatically we have added okay so like that we can specify we can do the configuration in form of using xml or using annotation however we want to do okay whatever so but this uh, using this annotation that is very much easy and clear you can do that one or you can follow that xml whatever you prefer you can do okay fine so this is the configuration this is the configuration now next one is the next one is the life cycle of servlet what is the life cycle life cycle means life cycle means when the object is created what is happening after creating the object how the request of client is processed and after processing the request what is what is uh, what is happening so this is nothing but the life cycle of servlet this is nothing but the a life cycle of servlet so life cycle of servlet is happening in these five steps first one is loading the servlet class loading the servlet class will happen only once loading the servlet class will happen only once because we we have already seen the classes will be loaded only sorry only once the classes always will be loaded once only so here if you see uh, in servlet a we can add one static block in servlet a we can add one static block and in that inside that static block inside that static block what we can do what we can do we can we can write some information like like uh, servlet a loaded class loaded simply class loaded that's it servlet a class loaded inside servlet b also i am giving the same thing servlet b class loaded uh, we can give this as static because static only it will access okay and the third one is c default servlet static and this one also should be in that case static okay so here this is a servlet c this is a servlet b and this is a servlet a so now first one it will load the class class is loaded by jvm when it is used it will automatically loading the class however we are loading the class however jvm loads the class that same strategy after that one it is creating the servlet object and servlet object is created using default constructor so we have given the default constructor if you see we have given default constructor if you don't give then by default default constructor will be there if you remove that one in that case also default constructor is there because default constructor in every class by default will come so we no need to go but why i am giving because i want to see how many object is created we have to see that one okay and for servlet b also we have given a default constructor and here we have given servlet uh, uh, servlet b object created inside c servlet uh, c object created and inside servlet uh, inside servlet a servlet a object created that's it okay so after loading the class it will create the object after creating the object it will call your web container will call init method which init method this init method initialization method 
it will do the initialization after initialization what it will do it will not do anything it will not do anything whenever any request is arriving then only your web container is calling service method by passing servlet request and servlet response ob response object reference and destroy will call whenever you are shutting down your uh, web container or whenever uh, your servlet is not in use so in that case this will be called that's it destroy method so only one servlet object is created so here in note they have given only one servlet object is created for all the request and client the the creation of a servlet object is depend on the configuration means when exactly the object is created when your application is starting at that time you have to create or whenever first request is arriving at that time you have to create the object but object will be created once here you also see only one object will be created for servlet but when you have to create the object whether you have to create the object when the application is starting or when you have to create the object when first request for that servlet is arriving that is up to the uh, configuration if we don't give the configuration then it will create the object when first request is arriving if you configure then it will create when application is starting okay and initialization is happening only once okay okay fine so here uh, we have what we have specified for servlet a if you see in web.xml we have specified servlet name servlet class name and url we have not specified when exactly the object should be created and for c also we have not specified so when object will be created when the first request is arriving so i will uh, start I, I, I will run this application and i will show you so run on server next finish okay fine so now application is started and hello world welcome to java servlet course this is the index page this is our index page okay index page means how exactly index page is coming for this because we have not written any servlet for index page then how it is coming because of because of uh, we can specify in web.xml what is our welcome file name yes you can see this is our welcome file name list we can give welcome file name any of them index.html index.htm index.jsp default html default html default jsp any name you can give if we give any of this name it will automatically take if you give any other name what is the current name uh, what is the name of uh, index file our uh, currently index.html so index.html is in the, is there in this list so it will automatically take if we change this name to like abc.html xyz then we have to specify that name here then it will automatically take that uh, index file name okay so that is that's fine that is fine now if i open this console now if i open this console and you can see currently there is nothing related to creating the object uh, loading the class nothing is there you can see here we have not seen any information like uh, class a is loaded class uh, servlet a loaded servlet b loaded or object created is nothing so i am clearing this one and now what i am doing i am creating i am calling url a url a so i have called url a now if you see here now if you see the console and you can observe what it is doing first servlet a class loaded first it is loading class then it is a creating object then it is calling who is calling web container then first you what is what your web container is doing your web container is loading the class then your web container is creating the object after that one your web container is initializing the servlet and after that one it is a fulfilling the service see service method and if i clear this one and if i hit this request again then what will happen if you see the console again what will happen what will happen service only service method why it is not calling no because i sometime if i am refreshing no sometime if i simply refreshing it will not refresh uh, it will not call the uh, 
uh, server it will directly take from cache so that's why sometime you need to press control and f5 in that case it will not take from the cache okay so here if you see every time every time it is calling service and ent entering into service exiting from service entering into service it is not calling to a creating object or it is not calling to the init method because init method and object creation will happen only once only one object will be created for the servlet class and initialization will happen only once when the object is creating at that time only initialization is happening when the object is creating at that time only the initialization is happening so so this object creation and initialization will happen only once and this class also will be loaded once because that is the standard way of jvm how jvm is doing jvm is loading only one time Cla classes uh, jvm is loading only one time the classes okay and object is created only once means one object will be created for all the requests how many n number of thousand lakhs request is coming this one object will handle so that's why this is a lightweight only one object and a sim small thread this is a small thread this will be executed by threads only okay and this is initialization initialization also will be happening okay and when the request uh, is arriving then what is happening what is happening when the request is arriving when the request is arriving your web container will create a thread what is happening when this when the when the request is arriving request is processed by the following method which method service method inside the service method servlet request and servlet response parameter will be there and what your servlet will do when the request is arriving your servlet will, will create a thread your servlet will create a thread means for per request one thread will be created if suppose if one lakh request is coming it means one lakh thread your servlet container will create and will process it means simultaneously this process is happening it is not like that it is a blocking if one user is doing the other user has to wait no it is not like that it is a, like a thread only so multi threading it will provide that's why we have seen in the la in the first session no so your web container will do the threading okay so as per the requests if one request is there then one thread if two requests is there two threads n number of requests will be there n number threads your servlet container will create and it will call service method that's it after that one how as per the server uh, service method uh, implementation uh, it will be executed okay okay fine and this destroy method will be called when you are when you are shutting down your server uh, your uh, web container or that's it okay that's it so this is for servlet a you can see this is for servlet a i am calling servlet a so it is it's always calling servlet a servlet a service method if i call url b then what will happen if you see sir because servlet b for servlet b this is for uh, yeah this is for servlet a before so now because servlet b this was the first request for servlet b this was the first request so that's why first it is loading then it's a creating object then your web container is initializing the servlet b and then it is fulfilling the service now if i clear this one and if i call the request call this again if i call this again in that case you can see you can see only service method again is calling it's not creating another object for service servlet b also means this is the basic this is the this is the life cycle only one object will be created and initialization will be happening only once but and for for fulfilling the request thread will be created okay okay fine and if i clear this one and if i call the servlet c in that case what will happen first servlet c will be servlet c class will be loaded then object will be created then initialization for servlet c will happen and then do get method will be called that is processing the uh, request and if i clear this one and if i call this again if i call this again you may you may see only do get method is calling okay so this is the this is the 
life cycle of your servlet and here also while doing the configuration we can do the configuration for load on startup what is the meaning of load on startup whenever your application is starting it will do the it will do the uh, create it will uh, loading the class it will uh, creating the object and your web container will uh, initializing it will do all your web container will do all this process when your application is starting so that configuration how can you do i am just stopping this one uh, okay i'm just stopping and i'm doing that configuration so how we can do that configuration for servlet a here load on startup you just specify the number like one so first this uh, this should be loaded which servlet should be loaded first servlet a then which servlet should be loaded servlet b servlet b and after that one servlet c should also be loaded while starting the application so where you have to do you have to do that configuration in this annotation only load on startup c simple so now what will happen now what will happen now whenever you are starting your application it will do all the configuration all the configuration means it will create it will uh, your web container will load the class will create the object and will initialize the servlet so run on server see every time if you are doing this one uh, that's also fine otherwise you can ch check here always use this server uh, this server when running this project and click on next and finish so it will not ask that pop up again okay so now if you see the console if you see the console now what is happening there so here if you see first what it is doing uh, servlet class loaded first it is loading the class class is loaded for servlet a then it is object is created for servlet a then initialization is happening for servlet a then in this uh, yeah this one is initialization that's it so initialization so this one is nothing but the configuration of servlet a first class is loaded then object is created then initialization happen and this one is for servlet b so, sorry servlet c servlet c class is loaded object of b is created okay ah then after the, the object of uh, sub, uh, servlet b is created then initialization for b is happening and then c object class is loaded and then object of c is created object of c is created and then initialization of c is happening that's it now here if you see why this class is loaded before only c object b is created class is loaded for c object b is created class class can be loaded any time that is uh, up to the user preference class can be loaded but configuration will happen in the same way only see first this is for happening for a yes then class only class is loading and then object b is created okay wait wait something is uh, servlet b sorry why why because no this is b only class b only we have given wrongly sorry yeah this is for c this is for b okay let me run again i will show you why it is happening because this we have given this uh, uh, the string we have given is b only so here this is a this is b this is c okay fine now it, this will happen in the same order run on server see now it is not, not asking for that pop up yes so now close this one and make this console bigger so here if you see first what is happening servlet a class is loaded object is created and initialized that's it now object of class b is loaded object is created and initialization is happen now servlet c of class is loaded object is created and initialization happen is happening in the same order however we given next one is if i change the order suppose suppose this should be created at a third position this should be created at a first position 
and this should be created at a uh, c should be created at a second position this is the configuration first which should be which should be created c according to configuration object b should be created first then object then object c should be created and the at last object a should be created the configuration we have given in this way so now if i run this one you will see it will be executing in the same order okay so if you see here first which one object is created see object b class is loaded object b is created and b is initialized then object c is created loader object c class is loaded object c is created and uh, servlet c is initialized and after that one servlet a class is loaded servlet a object is created and servlet a is initialized it is happening according to the configuration only so this is all about the life cycle of a servlet after that one now if i clear this console now if i clear this console and if i call url a then you you can see the console it will not call any initialization method or it is not creating the object because that is happening on load on startup only whenever your application is starting at that time only it is happening so that's why it's not calling any other initialization or any other method so this is all about the creating the servlet servlet configuration and life cycle of the servlet and in the next session we will see servlet context and servlet config so i hope you like this session please subscribe my channel and we will see you in the next session till that bye bye and thanks for watching